Hello, I'm Brian Whipker, Extension Floriculturalist at NC State University. In this podcast, we're going to be discussing plant growth regulator tips, and more specifically, how to use substrate drenches. So let's get started. So I'd like to thank Vine Americas, first of all, for helping support the publication of this podcast. So when you look at drenches, they have offer both advantages and disadvantages. And so they can give you more uniform growth control is probably one of the biggest advantages of using those. In addition, especially for late season, small concentration uh, drenches, they offer a way to check growth so the plants don't get too big. So you avoid that late season stretch. And that's commonly done with poinsettias. Now the disadvantage that's there is that it takes more time to treat the plants and therefore it has some added cost. And typically the PGR cost is a little more because you're giving it a higher dosage under uh, a drench condition, but you get more long residual uh, control also with a drench. So when you're looking at drenches, which PGRs can be used? And that goes back to whether or not they have root activity. So you can see from the table and on the left, the different PGRs are listed, a Semidol down to BA and GA, and then the trade names is the next column, and then whether or not they're active on the leaves, stems, or roots. And so specifically, we're looking at root activity. And so if you apply a drench, whether or not it's taken up by the plant. So the more positives that are there, plus indicates a relative increase in, in how effective it is. And so which ones are the most effective? Fluoroprimidol, paclobutrazole, and uniconazole. They all have three positive uh, signs there. Some of the other ones, like asimidol, is very active. And we've also found out recently that both ethafon type products and BA and, and a GA product can also have root activity. So the only one in there that doesn't have root activity is really dimenazide. In that case, it's tied up by the substrate. If you added enough, actually, and get contact with the roots, you would have some effect that costs effectiveness is not there and one would end up using or a bit better off using one of the uh, BA or, or sorry the fluoroprimidol, paclobutrazole or uniconazole products. So when we look at substrate drenches what are we doing? We're applying it to the soil and then it's taken up by the plant and moved up into that plant and out into the leaves and so if you have a good drench volume that has total root coverage you have good consistent results. And so you have the upward movement of that chemical through the plant tissue called the xylem. That's indicated by the green positives with the arrows on it. The red uh, arrows indicate that it's not moving out. And that's because most of these products don't move in the phloem. That's that's what takes uh, nutrients and thing, chemicals out of the leaves. And so the, the activity in the xylem by far is more effective for these chemicals and you can get very nice growth control with the use of one of these drenches. So when you look at uh, some of these drenches, they do provide very uniform growth control, but it's important to get the dosage correct. And that is because you have to look at the correct volume and the concentration. And if you also, in many cases, you increase the volume with the size of pot that you're doing, uh, that you're applying it to. Now, keep in mind also, you want the soil to be slightly moist. If it's too dry, you might have the solution go uh, uh, run out the side of the pot. You don't want it overly wet though. And typically for most one-shot applications for the season, that's all you needed uh, unless you're doing some low dose drenches. In most ca cases, people are doing that through the chemigation system. It is fairly labor intensive if you're gonna do it by hand unless you do uh, a chemigation and some products are registered for that or if you have automated equipment. And if you, are doing it through sub-irrigation, you need to use a rate that's about half of what you would use uh, for uh, an overhead or a, a top uh, applied drench application. So when you're looking at the volume, that's very critical and you need to have uniformity of application uh, and then you will get a uniformity in response. And so uh, volume can be used as an application tool, tool. So if you increase the volume, you can increase the dosage. So then what do you expect? You're gonna get 
more control. And so you can also increase the volume, especially when you have a bigger size pot, you need to have more solution there to make sure you do have root contact uh, for that plant. And so when you look at doses, we measure a dose or determine a dose by measuring out a known amount of the chemical and then adding it to a known volume of water so you have a concentration there and then applying a known volume of that mixed solution to each individual pot. And so the first two factors there determine the concentration. Then the volume is based on how much you're actually adding and then that determines what the dose is for that particular plant and then you know you get your growth control. So that is the basis of when you look at recommendations based on milligrams of active ingredient or mg per pot. That doesn't always is the case, it's not always the case if you're looking at a part per million recommendation. And so here's an illustration of looking at different pot sizes and the amount of PGR or solution that you should add. So a small four inch pot is that blue um, bar on the left, it's two ounces. Then for a five inch pot, three ounces, six inch pot, four ounces, and then it increases significantly as you increase the size of the pot. So you add more solution to become in contact with that root system in that pot. So when you look at drenches with that are uh, based on a recommendation of milligrams of acti active ingredient per pot, that takes into account the volume differences that are there. So the dose stays the same across the pot sizes. So if you say you're, gonna, you're supposed to add two milligrams and you would put two milligrams in a uh, two ounces that you're adding to the pot or it could be in eight ounces that you're adding to the pot. So you, you, you're targeting the amount of active ingredient that you want to have in that pot. But when you do uh, a mixture based on parts per million, many times recommendations aren't, uh, don't take into account the volume that needs to uh, change. And we do it actually a little of a sloppy job of giving recommendations. And so if, if it's someone says, oh, you're supposed to apply five parts per million, then you need to know that it's like in four ounces for a six inch pot. And that's the part we don't always give in recommendations. And that's a very critical piece of information to determine uh, because if you add more of the chemical per pot, of course, you're gonna increase the dose and then you can have an overdose uh, situation. So to, to illustrate this point that when you look at parts per million, that is milligrams per liter. So if you mix a one liter solution of, of chemical at 50 parts per million, then that contains 50 milligrams of chemical. But if you only take a small amount, 10 mils, and add it to a pot, you're gonna give 0.5 milligrams of a dose to the plant. If you add 100 mils to the, to the pot, that gives five milligrams. And if you add the whole thing to a pot, it's 50 milligrams. So you can see there's a 100x difference there in the particular dose that could happen to a plant. So knowing exactly how, much, how many fluid ounces or mils that you need to add to the pot is very important and it matters. So when you're looking at parts per million recommendations, they you need to pay attention to how many fluid ounces also need to be applied to that pot. And that fluid ounces, uh, as far as uh, for an active ingredient situation for milligrams AI is already taken care of in that uh, recommendation. So find out how many milligrams or how many, how many fluid ounces to add if you're gonna do a part per million drench. And it works perfectly fine, you just need to know how many ounces. And for the default is the standard of, of four ounces per six inch pot and, and less for smaller pots and more for a larger pot. So here's some results, some work we did with top floor, looking at caladium's red flash. You can see the untreated control is on the left, then one milligram in the middle, two milligrams on the right. And you can see that we had some nice growth control and more fuller size plants occurring with the use of a PGR drench. Here's some work we did with collate. The top row, the A row is early, earlier in the season. The B row is at bloom. And this was uh, drenches of collate at zero, 125, 250, and 500 parts per million. You can see that really about 125 gave some nice growth control and you still had um, uh, a nice amount of flowers on this Vista bubblegum set of plants here. 
whose work also on collate that we did with the Americana dark red geraniums. And that 125 rate looks nice for controlling the, the growth of the plant. It's a little bushier, it's not as tall. And you also notice that even though this is at the pond, that drench did not cause a delay in flowering on that plant. We also did at the fine drenches collate, and this is, uh, this is a part per million, and we added eight fluid ounces per gallon pot. Untreated control of the plants on the left, and then 125 up to 500 parts per million was used. And really, we changed the architecture. And two weeks later, when they bloomed a little more significantly, uh, there were a lot more shoots, and those plants were simply gorgeous at 125 parts per million for these plumbago plants. So it worked quite well. In contrast, when we used, we had a full array of piccolo and top floor rates, and plants are very sensitive to both of these chemicals. While they kept things smaller, uh, the, the difference between no control and control was very short and the overdose condition came very quickly. And so by far, even though you don't get the size, the, the diameter reduction uh, that you would expect or you would really like to have with the ethophon, the collate product, uh, you did have a plant that I think would look better and respond better in the landscape for people and it had more uh, bloom power. It worked quite well. Here's some work by my colleague Joyce Latimer at Virginia Tech looking at Abide on Veronica. And you can see as the drench rate increased from two to eight part per million, she had more control. So probably you'd want to dial in on under these conditions, probably around two uh, to four parts per million, depending on the amount of control that you wanted for a Veronica plant. So that's the basic background information for doing drenches. We'd like to thank again Fine Americas for supporting these podcasts. And so in summary, when you're looking at drenches, they do provide more uniform growth control. And a late season drench in particular at a low concentration really works very well for checking the growth and it has very limited effect on flowering. And so that's another thing that you might wanna consider when you're looking at drenches. So with that, I'd like to thank you for watching the podcast.